As an engineering manager, how do you manage the performance of your team? Hey everyone, welcome back to another engineering manager mock interview with Exponent. My name is Kevin Wei, and on today's show, we have Josefa. So we're going to do a leadership question today. And before we start doing that, Josefa, do you mind telling the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm an engineering manager at, at Facebook. I've been working in the software industry for about 12 years. Now I um, have some experience in, in the fintech space, worked at PayPal and Wealthfront previously. Great. So like I mentioned, we're doing a, a leadership type question today for our mock video. And this is what I want to ask. As an engineering manager, how do you manage the performance of your team? Cool. Um, as an engineering manager, um, one of your main responsibilities is that you are, uh, you know, managing, running, running a team. And as one of the main uh, uh, core responsibilities uh, in that is managing the performance of, of your team, right? So uh, for managing performance, there are two aspects to it is one is being able to, to track um, how every person in your team is doing and then you measure that against the level expectations that that they they need to be measured at um, within within the within the company. So every engineer, every company has invariably some kind of uh, expectations set for every level um, of an engineer, uh, be it a junior or a, or a senior or a staff engineer. You you need to be able to uh, as a, as a manager. Um, see how the engineer is doing and being able to kind of translate that into what it means from an expectations um, stand, standpoint. Um, the way you would want to kind of um, do that is basically making sure that you are uh, plugged in into what everybody uh, in the team is doing. So you, you have regular one-on-ones with, with the engineers. You're talking about what, what they're working on, what are their goals, what, what um, they've planned to do um, in, in uh, you know in, in the coming coming weeks and and months. Uh, I think one on ones is a interesting part of performance management. Um, can you tell me about how you might run one on ones differently if you have a very small team versus a very large team? Sure, I think in a um, in a small team, obviously you can give a lot more um, focus time to to everybody. So you can probably think of having one-on-ones every every week, right? Let's say you have a five to seven person team, you can you can afford to do do a one-on-one with them every week. You are able to kind of you know very clearly know what everybody is is doing um, on a, on a day-to-day basis. Now you scale that out to maybe a fifteen to an 18, 18 person team. That that doesn't become possible to have a one-on-one every every week with everybody. There's just uh, too much of a time commitment right you probably have a have a meeting every every other week uh, with them uh, in that case you 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 know you rely on your leads uh, in your team whether you have leads per work streams or whether a couple leads um, in in areas to also b- give you uh, some some feedback about the other engineers on the team so you're not only talking to the engineers directly in terms of seeing how how they are doing uh, you know how how they are progressing um, but you are also looking at feedback from the other seniors, uh, senior engineers within the team to kind of give you that additional data point that you might uh, not have access to gi- given the size of your team. Totally, yeah. P- peer feedback is would be re- very helpful in large teams here for you as a manager. Um, yeah, didn't mean to interrupt you. Was there anything else you wanted to talk about about helping underperformers? Sure. So I think um, over here, underperformers is... is um, one obviously a, a, a challenge that I think every every manager come up will come across um, at some point in time in their career, and as a manager, I think it's and and depending obviously on on the company's culture is how do you go about uh, seeing whether you can uh, help the underperformer improve, right? So I think um, over here, one of the things you want to want to make sure is that you are giving this feedback to the candidate. Uh, regularly so let's say most companies have a six month uh, review cycle so this shouldn't come as a surprise to the candidate you know at the end of six months that they are underperforming if they they have been underperforming and the managers seen that that feedback should should be given to to the uh, engineer in in their one-on-one already so come 
the formal performance time this is not something that they they're hearing for the first time so it's not a surprise over there so once you kind of have that first um, conversation that you know things are not not uh, where as where they should be you need to start then figuring out why why that is the case right are they working on something they they don't like are they um, not getting the necessary help that they they need what if, uh, you know is is there something on the personal side that is uh, impacting their uh, professional uh, 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 output right so you 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 want to kind of get to get to the root co- root cause of the problem then you see how you you can kind of solve that problem right you you want to break it down maybe into into smaller parts have some milestones uh, set um, and agreed upon by the engineer and the manager so that then you can track them on a on a maybe a weekly weekly basis right you may make sure that let, let's say if, if even if you are in a big team you you have one on one with everybody every other week with this candidate or this person you have every every week so you are able to kind of give that uh, attention and hand hold them so that uh, they are able to kind of improve improve their performance you you see whether they are hitting hitting those agreed upon milestones or or not great let's take a look at the other side of the spectrum so thanks for talking about how you would handle underperformers um so you have underperformers and then you might also have some top performers some rockstar engineers on the team so how do you keep these top performers motivated yeah i think um top performers mot- motivation is what motivates everybody is is different right so i think as as a manager one of the things you want to know is what motivates a particular engineer whether what kind of recognition they they kind of want right and you want to make sure that your top performers are uh, giving that recognition you you also need to make sure that they are constantly challenged by the work they are doing right they are constantly learning so making sure that as they are moving in their career as they are getting more and more senior you are giving them bigger and bigger problems to solve so like think of it where you give them a problem which is initially scoped at a task level then they go to a problem which is at a a project level then they can look at team level they can look at organization level depending on the size of the company they're looking at a problem that they want to solve at a company level right so you give them bigger and bigger bigger problems you also look at giving them problems from different areas so that they are not kind of only getting in becoming really strong in one area they are they are working across uh, multiple areas at the at the same time obviously the other other part of most uh, you know strong performers is making sure that they they are compensated accordingly they are getting promoted um, um accordingly um, as as well um also i think another thing which people do underestimate is that giving mobility or the option for mobility for the top performers within the company uh you know uh people work within in an area for 3 4 years it can get monotonous right so you you don't want your top performers actually to leave the company in order to seek a new challenge as a manager if you sense that is happening you maybe you know proactively seek out if there is another opportunity elsewhere within the company that uh, the top performer can join so that they kind of get that uh, uh, new challenge uh, or within the company rather than you losing losing a top performer totally um i have a very um interesting scenario here for you okay so uh let's say hypothetically that you are in a meeting with a an engineer in a one on one and then you notice maybe like from their screen sharing or something you notice that they might be looking for another job and this is an enge- engineer that you really want to keep on your team um like is there something that you would do here would you tr- uh, do anything to try to retain them uh definitely if i would feel that the engineer is a flight risk and i do want to retain retain the engineer right it's it's like the manager's test right that do you do you want to keep the engineer at at all cost or not and if if the answer is yes i do want to keep the engineer i would definitely uh, you know find try to find out uh, what is causing the engineer to uh, look for a new role right no maybe not within that same one on one i would uh, i would bring it up in a, in another conversation um but i would definitely talk about it and see what what i can do to to retain retain that 
that engineer whether it's uh, you know they they want looking for a new challenge or it's work life balance whatever that is i i would definitely try to find that out and and see how how i can help uh, resolve it yeah i think i think that's a good approach just taking a step back thinking about it um and then bringing it up in the future once you have a more thoughtful um approach on how yeah you you definitely need a, need a plan of action uh before you you start this conversation cool um okay let's talk about someone who's doing very well and they're they should be up for a promotion so what are the steps that you would take as a great engineering manager to help set someone up for a promotion yeah so i think over here setting somebody up for promotion is something that needs to get planned um you know probably 6 months to a year 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 ahead you need to start working on it it's not something that will that can happen only during the the performance review cycle right so you want to make sure that let's say if you are example going from an a uh, level 1 to a, to a level 2 to to engineer in in most cases you would want to be performing already at a, at, at the next levels so that you get promoted right promotions invariably are a lagging lagging indicator uh, um, in terms of the ability or the skill set that that an engineer shows so you you want to work with the engineer sh- tell them what are the expectations uh, of the next level what are the what what they need to do to uh, meet those expectations and also as a manager give them that opportunity to uh, to sh- demonstrate uh, those those expectations right uh uh give them those opportunities to to succeed be it working on bigger projects leading projects uh um you know better documentation being able to lead uh, system system designs uh, collaborations with with other teams whatever the the requirements are give them that opportunity and and make sure they are able to uh check have do that on a regular basis so another another thing that is uh, important to note note here right that when you want to move to the next level it's not a checklist of things that you need to do only once right you need to constantly be able to demonstrate that that behavior uh, in some sense you want to make that as muscle memory so as a man- manager you you start off early so that you can show th- show them once and then you need to see whether our is the engineer demonstrating those uh, traits on a regular basis without you having to prompt them that this is something that is needed from the next level so you know that once they move to the next level they will still be able to succeed if they come back to where they were before it's not going to be good for you or the engineer uh, in in the long run cool thanks for walking me through that process so we can stop the mock interview here thanks for your time josefa i'd be curious now just before we wrap things up if you can tell me and tell the audience about just how important these leadership questions are in engineering manager interviews yeah i think these leadership questions are are, are very important uh, because they give uh, they, they are used as signals right to see what kind of a manager you are and the other important thing is that uh, in any interview I, right now we spoke in very hypotheticals uh, but in an active in an actual interview you want to kind of get into actual use cases or actual uh, scenarios where this has happened to you and how you've kind of addressed it and maybe even re- thinking about retrospectively if you had to do do it all over again what you could do differently in in things that might not have worked out well right so you want to definitely uh uh root these uh, answers in in something that has really happened with you uh, and i think that will lead a lot more wait to to what you say versus talking in hypotheticals during during an actual interview yeah it makes a lot of sense and when you're giving those scenarios that have happened to you in your past using some framework like the star framework situation task action result would be very helpful cool thanks so zefa for your time and for the audience watching at home good luck with your upcoming engineering manager interview thanks so much for watching don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.